I had to question my mother and father who sent me over here in, his, in their own way, not in a negative way. Uh, my teachers in high school, everything I had been taught was a lie. Everything I knew about World War II was a lie. It wasn't true at all. We did not win the war. <laughs> My name is Vân. I'm a Vietnamese. I was born eight years after the American war officially ended. Nowadays, life is better for most people in my country. Even though things are better, the American war is still among us. gia đình thì sinh ra hai cháu thì đều bị chất độc da cam hết. Còn trường hợp nhiễm là vì hồi năm thăm bản thân tôi là đi kháng chiến chống Mỹ, đi theo dọc chiến dịch Hồ Chí Minh. Thì khi năm 1997 lập gia đình thì thì cũng chưa biết được sinh khi sinh cháu đầu lòng là năm 1998 thì cháu sinh thì bình thường nhưng mà mọi cái sinh mọi cái cái cái, 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 cái phát triển của cháu là chậm phát triển rồi đi khám bệnh viện nhi đồng một nhi đồng hai là à, kết quả là bài nặng cháu thứ hai thì nói chung sau 3 năm thì nói chung mọi sinh hoạt của hai cháu cũng tề tầm tề không có phát triển mà mình phải phục vụ từ mọi cái, cái sinh hoạt cũng như mọi cái ăn uống rồi ngủ nói chung bố mẹ phải chăm sóc hết các cháu cũng từ cũng từ phục vụ mình được thì khi đó thì mới đi đi khám ở thành phố đi xét nhầm máu thì khi xét nhầm máu thì biết là nồng độ máu cũng truyền lại hai cháu chất điều xin do đi chiến đấu ở vùng có chất độc hóa học When, uh, when we were involved in the war here, after I, I refused to fight after a while, and they um, gave us jobs, uh, the people who didn't want to uh, fight, they called us non-combatants and gave us jobs doing things like uh, unloading ordnance and whatever. Sorry. One of the things we did was uh, we unloaded uh, barrels of uh, what they said was insecticide to uh, kill the mosquitoes here. and. Um, so that people wouldn't get malaria. But it turned out to be Agent Orange, a dioxin. So for me, it's a very, um, a very emotional issue to try to make up for that harm.
Herbicides containing dioxin were sprayed for 10 years. The chemicals were sprayed mainly in areas where the enemy was hiding. U.S. forces wanted to destroy the foliage protecting the Viet Cong. The second reason was to reduce the capacity of rural people to produce food for themselves and to drive them to the cities so that they would not be as readily available to become supporters of the enemies of the South Vietnamese and the United States, which was the Viet Cong, was the Viet Minh from North Vietnam, represented by the Viet Cong in the so southern part of the country. About one-fifth of South Vietnam was sprayed with Agent Orange. The poison withered away the trees, bushes, and all tropical vegetation. In the forest, no effect of a herbicide. Here, it's no effect of herbicide. And this effect of herbicide, only the class, only the class. Agent Orange also killed animals. Species like the Duak Langur monkey are now endangered. The biodiversity is a problem. It's the only thing in the forest, many, many is a bird, many animal, many is a tiger, Eleven, monkey, and uh, etc. But the effect of her beside the tree die. In the forest, no fruit, no seed for the bird, no food for the animal. One of the worst polluted areas is Vietnam's central highlands. U.S. aircraft poisoned this area near the Laotian border repeatedly. The lines in the map are the routes of the spraying missions. Very important because during the war time, Ho Chi Minh came here. All of the people from the north to south had to pass here. Aloy village doctor Ho Van Moy witnessed U.S. planes spraying yellow toxin on the villagers in 1963. People were trying to wipe the substance from their skin and eyes. Soon Mr. Moy began having patients with skin and eye injuries. Later, the village families had children with deformities and disabilities. Both parents of this family fought in the American War, as the war is called in Vietnam, in the 1960s. They served in an area where herbicides were sprayed. The father died of bowel cancer nearly 20 years ago. The mother, a member of the Paco ethnic minority, has had a hysterectomy due to cancer. The dioxin in Agent Orange damaged Kayvon Bach, 24, during his mother's pregnancy. Mentally healthy, he is imprisoned in his dioxin-ravaged body. Kayvon Bach needs constant care. His mother is his sole supporter. They have constant money trouble. The mother says they have no food. Vietnam has 50 ethnic minorities. Almost all live in the most heavily polluted areas. The minorities have suffered most from the wartime toxins. The soil and water of a community near A Loi were found so poisonous that its over 1,000 inhabitants had to be relocated. Only one of this family's four children has a birth defect. Its cause has been traced to dioxin from Agent Orange. The father served in an area heavily sprayed from helicopters in the 1960s. 
Many families in Aloy have all their children born after the war, crippled by the poisons. There isn't a single family that has not experienced the devastation of wartime toxins. But these mountain villagers do not want to move from their homes. The disabilities and diseases caused by Agent Orange are a difficult social problem. A single Agent Orange victim stigmatizes the whole family. For example, you may not be able to marry if a member of your family has an Agent Orange disability. That is why dioxin disabilities are often kept secret. They are taboo. So many of the, 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 the family have the children, new born, new one. Very, very oh. He can put the another this. He then sold everybody to know this. He doesn't go to his hospital. So I don't know how many children. And this is a problem. This is a problem. Over the decades, the minorities in the poisoned areas have learned more about the causes of Agent Orange-induced disabilities and diseases. Now the mountain people know the toxins in the soil and water will transfer to people. For example, you cannot eat certain parts of animals if you want to avoid the poison. Only the meat of chicken, duck and fish is edible. No other parts must be touched. Many countries have helped Vietnam get back to normal after the war. Some Western countries have given Vietnam development aid for decades. Besides money, they have sent experts to help. An example is Finland. Many aid workers have spent years in areas heavily sprayed with Agent Orange. One of these areas is the Quang Tri province of the former border of South and North Vietnam, the demilitarized zone. The environment in this area was totally destroyed during the war. Kolmekymppinen ihminen en ole vielä lapsia saanut. Mä tiesin, että dioksiini ja tämä kerääntyy kehoärjentyisesti niin lisääntyviin elimiin. Niin mä heti ajattelin, että voi kauheasti, jos mä oon täällä kaksi vuotta ja syön paikallista ruokaa, että kuinka se vaikuttaa. Et mä yritin tällaista tietoa löytää, mistä ihan tämä, tämä, niin kuin tämä mittaustulokset ja mistä on otettu, niin en mä löytänyt niitä sellaista tietoa mistään. Kyllähän se mietityttää, mutta kun se ei se dioksiinikaan niin kuin heti tai seuraavana päivänä aiheuta mitään. Että sen, ne, sen ne vaikutukset on aika semmoista arvaamattomat. Mihin on tämän päivänä, niillä niin nöyryjä kuin niin toi. Cũng may vào chiến trường này bọn thần đánh bị Thế mà không may mà bị như thế này thì nó nó quá độc ác Ảnh hưởng cả một gia đình, cả một thế hệ Thế còn về sau này cả mình độ nào nữa thì chưa biết Tại vì có khi là bảo cái đời cháu nó còn phải thế Nếu không có Mỹ sang đây thì phụ nữ những tôi khi làm sao mà phải vào đấy làm gì nữa được Những vì thế cho nên là theo tiếng gọi của đảng Nữ cũng đi sang, sang trần
việc khó khăn đối với hai cháu giờ thì cháu lớn thì cứ một ngày cách ngày mình phải cho cháu đài tiền nhưng các cháu không đài tiền được rồi ngủ thì đêm là phải canh chừng với cháu nó ngủ dậy là cháu hay cuốn màn cái cuốn vào cổ hay là vào chân là cháu treo chân lên vì cái màn nó mềm còn cháu lớn ở à, cái cháu bé thì đếm ngủ mình cũng phải cánh nó, nó tỉnh giấc nó đập có khi đập vào răng mình gài cả răng luôn hai chân nó đập gài răng mình luôn nên không bao giờ bố mẹ cũng ngủ ron giấc được nên khi nào phải cánh chân còn cháu lớn thì nó bị bệnh đồng kinh nhé nên đôi khi nó, nó tự nhiên nó ngất xỉu rồi thì nói chung là nó cực lắm cơ nhưng mà, nhưng mà cô cũng phải tạo điều kiện bây giờ không biết mà nhìn vào ai được cả nó rất là cực thì bất ngày thì đi thì con nó chơi nhưng đôi khi đêm nó ngủ thì mình cũng phải thức cái nó ấy. About half a million of children have been born with birth defects caused by Agent Orange, which was sprayed during the American War in Vietnam. Many more didn't have an opportunity to be born at all. The toxins have broken the happiness of hundreds of thousands of families. Chất độc da cao là một cái chất rất là độc. Khi nó vào người thì không thể ra được. Và khi mà nó vào cơ thể người thì nó sẽ gây ra những cái tình trạng thay đổi về biến đổi gen. Nếu những người trưởng thành hoặc là những đứa bé lúc còn nhỏ thì nó sẽ thay đổi cái chất liệu gen. Và khi lớn lên thì đứa bé đó hoặc là những người trưởng thành đó sẽ sinh có khả năng sinh ra những đứa con bị quái thai. Hiện nay thì tại làng Hòa Bình này thì có khoảng 50 em là nạn nhân chất độc da cam thế hệ thứ hai và thứ ba chứ không phải là những em bị nhiễm trực tiếp bố mẹ, ông bà, các em bị nhiễm và di truyền cho các em và các em hiện nay thì đang được nuôi dưỡng tại làng Hòa Bình là khoảng 50 em trong số những em này thì có nhiều loại khuyết tật khác nhau và những khuyết tật này có thể nói là thuộc loại là khuyết tật lạ trên thế giới vì à, những khuyết tật mà do chất độc da cam á, thì à, các nước mà không bị rải chất độc da cam thì hầu như không có gì <cười> There are millions of people in Vietnam disabled by wartime poisons. Most of them cannot cope without help from others. The care of these disabled people is a major challenge to Vietnam. It has been said to slow down the economic development of the whole country. VAVA, the Vietnam Association of Victims of Agent Orange, was established long ago to support the victims. Its dozens of local cells organize health and recreational services for disabled children and young people. This nationwide organization for Agent Orange victims also raises funds for the sick and disabled. Tens of millions of dollars are used every year to support disabled people of all ages. Innumerable people need help, so the individual sums are not very high. The money comes mainly from the Vietnamese government and foreign charity organizations. The support by the former enemy, the U.S. government, or the toxin manufacturers, has been skimpy. These hearing-impaired victims of wartime poison in Hue complement their income by making utensils out of recycled materials. Những nạn nhân chất độc da cam ở Việt Nam thì như ngọn đàn, không biết tắt lúc nào. Riêng tại thành phố Đà Nẵng chúng tôi, trong năm nay chết 17 người. Như vậy, nếu như mà không kịp thời không nhanh chóng ủng hộ họ. Outside the capital Hanoi is the Friendship Village. 
It is kept by Vietnam veterans from six countries. The village offers food, health services, education, and hobbies to over 100 children and young people. Also, 40 Vietnamese war veterans are recovering in the village. The village was founded by U.S. war veteran George Mizo in the late 1990s. Mizo himself died of the injuries caused by Agent Orange some 10 years ago. He's got Agent Orange problems. Yeah. Many American soldiers also have it. Many American soldiers have already died from Agent Orange in America. We were sprayed by our own helicopters and our own aircraft sometimes. Um, they sprayed us as well as spraying him sometimes. And then a lot of times we would come into an area right after it was sprayed. Um, and uh, that's how we got poisoned. But it's true that the Vietnamese had it much worse because they were here for all those years, you know, with the exposure where we went home after only one year. But dioxin is so powerful that it doesn't take a long time of exposure to become poisoned by it, you know. Uh, many of our children are, are very, very ill, and now grandchildren, especially with spina bifida. The Friendship Village is one of the many ways American war veterans make up for the war and heal themselves decades after the war. The Vietnamese never blamed me as an individual for the war. They don't like my country, they don't like Richard Nixon, they don't like Johnson, but they tell me you were a young boy and you were doing what your country asked of you. And, and they forgive me. They're not angry at me, but they are angry at my country, even though they don't talk about it. Sewell D. Jones went to war to defend the noble idea of freedom. He was a Marine in the jungles of the demilitarized zone. When patrolling on the border between the North and the South, death was a constant companion. Sewell D. Jones was badly wounded. He recovered and returned to the U.S. There, he noticed the war had changed his whole life. And I had to rebuild my foundation as a human being and find out who I am. And it took many, many years and a lot of alcohol and a lot of drugs, a lot of chasing around the world. I was in India and ashrams. I tried everything uh, to reestablish who I was as a human being. Uh, the Vietnam War experience turned Swell D. Jones' life upside down. I lived in Mexico, I lived in South America, I, I lived all over the USA, and because I couldn't stop. And I finally went to Alaska, got this little cabin, 100 miles from the closest town, and I isolated myself for 25 years, basically. Jones decided to return to his former enemy country in the late 1990s. It was 30 years after the war. The first morning in Hanoi, Sewell took his first steps outside the hotel. A man stopped him in the street. And this man stopped me. And in, in, in pidgin English asked me, have I been Vietnam before? First they always ask you your age, so they know how to relate with you. Uh, and then 
asked me if I'd been to Vietnam before, and I thought, well, that's why I'm here. And I said, yes, I was 3rd Marines in 1968. And he kind of did like this with his finger and waved, and he says, um, he says, uh, you're the enemy. And my heart almost stopped. And I said, I said, yeah, I was the enemy here. And he put his arms around me and he said, welcome to Vietnam. And when that happened, I, it just made me, changed me momentarily, it just changed me. And I realized I'm not the enemy anymore. I'm a human being here. And I felt more human here than I did in my own country. Sewell D. Jones has written a book of his experiences, Meeting the Enemy, a Marine Goes Home. Vietnam has become a second home to Jones. When you go to war, when you kill someone, it changes you forever as a human being. It changes your humanity. It changes you for the rest of your life. That's the reason I say I was born in Vietnam. Every, the person I am today is totally and completely affected by Vietnam. Every breath, every thought, everything I've done since 1969 when I returned has been affected by my time over here. So I was born in this country. These kids are being born in Iraq. They're being born in Afghanistan. They think they're going to come home and go back to life the way it was. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. No more risks. No more stupid questions. No more heroes and no more headlines. It was only a missile. A total of 2.6 million American soldiers served in the Vietnam War. Like Sewell Jones, many returning American soldiers felt deeply lost. The massive herbicide springs also affected hundreds of thousands of Americans. From the jungles and poison bases, U.S. veterans brought home high dioxin concentrations in their blood. The results were quick to appear, disabilities and diseases in American children. My name is Heather Bowser and I'm 38 years old and I'm a victim of Agent Orange. On the website of U.S. veterans, Heather Bowser tells her story. Her father served in Vietnam. Heather calls herself a child of Agent Orange. She was born without several fingers and missing part of her right leg. Heather is convinced the cause is Agent Orange. Her father, Bill Morris, fought in Vietnam and was exposed to Agent Orange. Heather is one of tens of thousands of Americans with incurable damage from the war and Agent Orange. Heather has visited Vietnam meeting with her fellow docs and sufferers. Heather's fate is shared by many in the United States. Soon after the war, U.S. veterans started a struggle to get compensation from the poison manufacturers. After a long and arduous fight, dioxin manufacturers agreed to pay compensation to almost 300,000 Americans for the effects of the toxins. The compensation amounted to a total of $180 million. Vietnamese poison victims have also tried to get compensation from the American companies. Their latest class action against the poison manufacturers was dismissed by the U.S. Supreme Court in 2009. The court did not find grounds for compensation. The court decision stated that the toxins were intended to destroy only nature, not people. The injuries of the Vietnamese and Agent Orange are not connected. I grew up thinking America did everything good. And then I come to Vietnam and I realize we killed actually six million people for no reason whatsoever. And we sprayed this Agent Orange. And to me, it's USA cannot accept the morality or the immorality of what we did here. So it's best just ignore it. The biggest Agent Orange producer is the world's largest chemical corporation, Monsanto. Monsanto has dozens of times been accused of environmental destruction and poisoning people. The company has categorically denied any guilt. It has also systematically denied accusations related 
to the Vietnam War poisonings. The multinational Monsanto claims that there is no connection between its Agent Orange and the defects and rare diseases of the Vietnamese people. This is a claim repeated by all other toxin manufacturers. Nowadays, Monsanto is a partner of Vietnam. It has an office in Ho Chi Minh City and it does the business throughout Vietnam. Monsanto is now trying to expand the farming of genetically modified corn in Vietnam. And no one asked Monsanto why they did not contribute to the treatment because they made the, the Agent Orange. Agent Orange victims don't normally have independent life. Most of them need help and ongoing care from their families. But there are some exceptions. Hung is a 17-year-old boy from Saigon. There are five children in the family. Three of them have defects caused by a dioxin. Hung was born with a spinal cord defect, spina bifida which makes him move awkwardly. The defect is caused by dioxin. Hung receives a small subsidy from the government every month, but the subsidy does not cover all everyday expenses. His parents do not support him. Both parents are already dead. They were exposed to Agent Orange during the Vietnam War. Hung works at the covered market, Ben Tang, in Ho Chi Minh City. Being an orphan, he must sustain himself by selling lottery tickets. The effects of Agent Orange have been extensively studied in both the U.S. and Vietnam. American scientists have proved scientifically that Agent Orange is behind at least 17 different diseases. Studies by Greenpeace put the number at 123. Maybe dioxin can make a problem for gene mutation. And after that, it's become a genetic disease and can transmit to many, many generations. Maybe forever if the mutation happens. But I don't know. We need the answer. Hiện nay thì chưa có một cái công bố nào cho biết rằng là chất độc da cam sẽ ảnh hưởng tới bao nhiêu thế hệ và sẽ tới bao lâu thì sẽ chấm dứt vấn đề là còn thời gian vì hiện nay thì cái ảnh hưởng của chất độc da cam vẫn còn tồn tại và nó di truyền tới thế hệ thứ ba rồi và để biết được nó bao giờ thì chấm dứt thì phải chờ thời gian còn hiện nay thì cũng chưa ai dám công nhận hoặc là công bố là nó sẽ chấm dứt vào thế hệ thứ tư hay thứ năm hay thứ sáu gì đó the 40th anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War is close. Cleaning up the old battlefield is still far from completion. There are areas in Vietnam where toxin levels are as much as 400 times higher than normal. The city of Da Nang is one of these places. Da Nang Airfield is one of the so-called hot spots where the soil is polluted by the super toxins. An Agent Orange base used to be at one end of the airfield. The poison from the orange striped barrels was pumped into the tanks of aircraft and helicopters. The poison was sprayed on various parts of the country and the planes returned to base. But the soil is badly infected. Thousands of liters of hazardous supertoxins spilled here, soaked into the soil. For decades, the toxins have been carried by water to the city. The old base is closed and guarded a special permit is needed to photograph it for 10 minutes. Hiện nay trên địa bàn thành phố Đà Nẵng chúng tôi có hơn 5.000 nạn nhân chất độc da cam, trong đó có gần 4 trẻ em. Thì cái nỗi đau của nạn nhân chất độc da cam tại Việt Nam thì cần sự quan tâm giúp đỡ của bạn bè quốc tế trong và ngoài nước để kêu gọi cộng đồng hành với chúng tôi để kêu gọi ủng hộ cho nạn nhân chất độc da cam. The Vietnamese government has tried to get the U.S. government to help neutralize the poisons it imported. Some of the poison concentrations have been eliminated with the help of funds from the Ford Foundation. 
the cleaning of the poisons will cost about 34 million US dollars. Even though the US government has not been interested in the devastation caused by the toxins, a movement of moral awakening seems to be taking place in the US. The responsibility of the US to clean up its mess is emphasized by the prestigious Aspen Institute. The Institute spent three years examining the scars of the war. In summer 2010, it publicized a plan to clean up the poisoned areas. I've always believed that America's foreign policy have to be, has to be based both on our strategic interests and our, our moral values. And there's no better example of something that's both in our strategic interests and part of our moral values than to clean up uh, the Agent Orange and Dioxin mess. According to the plan, it takes 10 years to clean up the toxins. The U.S. government will pay the lion's share of the cleanup. Other public sources and private donations would also be used for the funding. Vietnam's government and people would also contribute. The Aspen Institute calculates that the wartime toxins could be removed with 300 million U.S. dollars. Although the U.S. government did not find Agent Orange to be the cause of diseases and developmental defects, the acknowledged representatives of the Aspen Institute established the connection when traveling in Vietnam. So many of the children we saw were innocent children who were born way after the events that caused the use of Agent Orange. Um, and this infection of subsequent generations of new innocent children will occur until we do something to stop it. The Aspen Institute Action Plan has raised hopes that one day the toxins in Vietnam might be cleared away. This hope is increased by the belief that the cleanup plan has a strong advocate in the U.S. government. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has visited Vietnam many times. She is well aware of the problems the war caused in the country. The U.S. House of Representatives has already decided to support the cleanup of the Da Nang base. But even cleaning up the worst toxic pockets will not remove Vietnam's Agent Orange plight. It is feared that dioxin will continue to cause defects in children for generations. If the suspicions that dioxin is mutagenic are true, the scars of Agent Orange will never go away in Vietnam. In any case, pregnant women in Vietnam will be burdened by a special worry for decades. Will my innocent child become the next victim of the Vietnam War? If any other country in the world had invaded a country and killed four million people, there'd be war crimes for the next hundred years. But because we're the biggest and the baddest country in the world, not one person, Kissinger, Nixon, Johnson, no one has ever had one war crime against them.